the position of the Roman cult, uh, the uh, Moloch worshipping uh, Talmud rabbi, the Venetian noble classes, the Knights of Malta, uh, European nobility, uh, from their perches of being the uh, controllers uh, of us allegedly being slaves. All right, we're very close. Um, and with that, and, and I think we, we a, a, a remarkable thing is, I think, going to, to take place. We've learned a huge amount in terms of, uh, in very short time, in terms of how their system um, controls standing, uh, how they hide the ecclesiastical, the overwhelming ecclesiastical nature of their courts. Um, but now, what we find and what I found is the entire court system, every member is dedicated towards honouring rule of law, canon law. So, that. yeah, so what we're going to be able to do, in fact, uh, Vic, uh, Vic uh, Charlie has just sent me your email, so I'm going to send you these. So when we present canon law to them, for the first time ever, um, we are going to be able to, to say to, to the Bar Society, um, honour your code, honour your um, pledge, honour your oath, and obey canon law. Here are the canon laws that you are disobeying. Now, that is going to shock them to their bone because they have absolutely no response. It is their weakest flank. It is absolutely the weakest flank. Once we establish canon law as it, as it should be, we, we actually finally and forever destroy their jurisdictional, jurisdictional claims. Right. But until we do that, their jurisdictional claims are watertight and are virtually impossible to penetrate. Yeah, I would uh, agree with that. They're running a tight ship. They've been running a very tight ship for a long time. So I'm just going to punch through here. I don't know how quick you get, um, how quickly you get email, but I'm about to send you through the first 22 right now, and hopefully you'll go through quickly. I've sent one to Charlie, and I've sent one to Gerald. So it's just been sent, Vic. Hopefully you get it straight away. Okay. Yeah, my computer's not on right now, so it's actually used for another purpose right now. So I won't be able to access it right now, but I will get it. Uh, All right. Okay. After well, that's right. I've sent you the first 22 canon laws so you can actually see it <laughs> and see how we, we position uh, against the existing um, false laws. Uh, so it's a really exciting time, Vic. We're very close. Well, it sounds very good, and uh, I got really good feelings, as I say, when I was reading the information on your website, and um, I was rather astounded, actually, and uh, the depth of it all, <laughs> to be honest with you. And uh, But I like where it's going, and uh, I, I know from my own self that uh, the divine is in charge here, and things are going to happen as they should, and it will all be good, and it's uh, the time is now. Hmm. I've, I've spent a lot of time. I've spent a lot of time reading legal stuff, but uh, slowly I, it evolved away from that more towards the, the that's for lack of better words, the spiritual aspect of things. And when I did that, it started to I started to attract uh, more and more information in that regard to me, and uh, which opened my eyes up to you know having one, a doubt in the divine. <laughs> one way. one thing, uh, Vic, when you get into the model, you'll find that it's based on forgiveness of everything. And uh, you'll find with a lot of the established religions, there are certain things that they cannot forgive. And cannot or will not? Well, cannot forgive. Both, I think. Yeah. Both. And possibly both, yeah. But anyway, the, the Eucadian model forgives everything. That's the only way the war can stop, right? <clears throat> yep. So uh, you'll, you'll find that as you get deep into the covenant of one heaven of the forgiveness of everything. And all force being turned for good instead of evil. Yes. So uh, some people will have a hard time wrapping their head around that because they they want uh, the demons to burn in hell and certain evil people to burn in hell and so forth. Eh? But unless hell is eliminated, the war continues forever. Eh? Yeah. Well, that was part of my evolution. I let go of all that anger and grief, and you know, this water under the bridge. Good. It, it won't. It won't take me anywhere. So. Uh, 
<clears throat> I spend a lot of time dealing with my myself and my ego, if you will. Excellent. And, uh, I'm not saying it's all gone, but uh, you know the the negative aspects of it, but uh, the controlling aspects of it. But uh, I don't I don't hold grudges to anybody, and uh, I do my best to love it all, to, to, to basically love it to death. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I mean that in a good sense, not a you know a, a death on the cross kind of thing, and all that morbid stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like I say, a lot of stuff has come my way. Um, I don't know if you've read the Letters of Christ. Uh, it's a big eye opener for me, which is the uh, basically uh, <clears throat> I can't say for sure, but uh, I, I believe it to be true that it's it's the truth of existence and it's the real story that when Christ was here 2,000 years ago, it was as he points out in his letters that are channeled through a lady in South Africa that. Uh, there isn't a man, woman, on the, or child on the planet, even today, that understands his message of 2,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. So that the, <clears throat> the, and the, fir- the first letter is, is to, to tell people, and this is where my religious friends can't do it, but to, to let go of all the religious beliefs because they're all wrong. Mm-hmm. Every single one of them. There's no truth in any of it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so I'm yeah, very well aware. Uh, yeah. Well, when, that's, when, a, that's a very hard one. Yeah. yeah. One one of the things that we've been working on is um, a thing called a notice of correction of record, <clears throat> and uh, um, some of the insights that I've gotten lately have uh, been assisted uh, or given directly by a fellow in England that I've been talking to, and uh, just today he um, pointed me to a couple of uh, things that are up on UK uh, legal websites. Uh, where it says, um, for instance, that uh, if a man or woman stands in front of a judge and proves that they're a living flesh, he has, has to offer them remedy. And I would this, agree with that. Yes, and this okay. comes... Have you ever heard of the Sesta KV Act from 1666? Uh, can't say I have. Yeah. Well, what it did was declare everyone dead if they haven't been heard from in seven years. So from the birth certificate up to seven years, if they haven't heard from you, they consider you dead and they handle you as a trust from that point on. So when you when you tell the judge in a in, in where you tell them in the system that you're alive, uh now they have to start dealing with you from a different angle. But this is just one small aspect of what needs to be covered in letting them know uh that their j the jig is up, eh? Well, I, and I would agree with that because we've actually had experiences where that has happened. And the first one was uh, a friend in the tax case, and the, the judge said to him, "Okay, Dan, I'm giving you your remedy. I hope you know what to do with it." And he did, and he just took, discharged the tax liability for, for one and once and for all. His, his taxes are being managed by the system now, and he doesn't see any of the paperwork. Mm-hmm. It's always that well, zero. Vic, mm-hmm. Well, Vic, another thing we found was that um, um, you know, you know, when judges. Um, you know, run off to their chambers. There's been a bit of a a feeling for a while that that somehow denotes that you're you're on the victory. We we discovered actually that that when a judge um when a judge first enters a chamber, he really is representing himself, and really all the laws of the society we think are you know by the by the parliament, but really they're all bylaws of the bar society. So in that first instance. Um, the, when you establish your standing, um, unless the judge provides remedy, he, he is in dishonour. Yeah. Yep. So if if a judge doesn't want to provide remedy, what he can do is he can leave the the, the court, which is what we see when they run out. But when he returns, he doesn't return to a, a form of court based on the rules of the bar society. He returns now, changing the form of the court without us seeing anything physically change, uh, into full admiralty court. Ah. Now, unless you then re-establish your standing again, um, then it, it's as if you are you, you no longer have any standing because it's a brand new court. Yeah? Yep. Gotcha. Yep, gotcha. Um, now, the, 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 it's also that what you ask for has to change as well, because if you ask for the wrong thing, they won't give it to you. So under the bar society, in the first form, it's remedy. But under the second form, because it's gone to pure admiralty, you really have only two choices. If you don't establish standing, they will treat you as salvage. 
uh, under the laws of Oleron, which is the base laws, and they're all fictional, but under the claim laws that the Roman cult and the Venetians use for uh, for commerce. So that salvage you dead, right? Um, you're just a four post of bed. If you reestablish your standing, which you must do uh, when the judge returns, what you ask for is cure and maintenance, not remedy. Because cure and maintenance is the form of, of, of remedy after the law. Yeah? yeah, I've never heard that one before. Well, under Admiralty law, the laws of Oleron is the base for it all. So um, it's always good to get back to the source document. And under that, what it says is, you know, salvage is salvage. Okay, there is no life salvage in maritime law. So if you're dead, it's, you're, you're going to be salvaged and basically put into some holding um, uh, uh, building, right? That's why they'll put you in prison. You're just a bit of cargo going to a warehouse. Yeah. But if you establish yourself as living, then um, under the laws of Oleron, that means you're a sailor, okay, on a ship of state. And they must provide you cure. Max, it's actually not just cure, but maximum cure and maintenance until your health is restored. So it, it actually is a stronger remedy than if the judge had never run out and returned. But what the judge is trying to do is, is basically re-establish uh, superior jurisdiction by tricking the defendant into not re-establishing their standing. Yes? Yep. And, and sadly, I feel that this um, happens, I think, almost 90% of the time, that that you know, a man or woman gets get learns the the, the the art of establishing their standing. Judges get wind of it. They're more often than not running from the chamber. The movement are told, truth movement are told that that is a good sign. Uh, so it's actually being misinterpreted. Right. But when they come back, uh, what they're doing is they've reestablished their honour. It's a totally different court. No, yeah. It's now purely a court. And unless you re-establish standing and ask for the correct um, uh, um, remedy for amnesty law, they will not give it to you. Yeah? Interesting. And they can do it once more, Vic. Yep. If they're really, if you're in a federal court, they can leave again for the third and final time. And if they leave again and they return, they come back as a high priest of the uh, religion of Baal and under the protection of the ecclesiastical laws of canon law where they are treated as an ordinary. So they're basically sitting there as a representative of the curia. It's as if you're in front of the Pope. Yeah? Right. right. Now, this is rarely done because a mistake at this level is a very serious error on their part and they could, if they do an error of dishonour at this third level, they, they lose... They, they lose being a judge forever, yeah. Is that right? But it's yeah. it's it's the last it's the last chance for them to basically get one over you, and it's only at that point that the claim of sovereignty of a living flesh being between oneself and God can be used. At no other point does it have any remedy. So really, what's happened with sovereignty is, I believe, sovereignty is a because of that is a genuine remedy, but only in the very, very rarest occurrences. Right. But other than that, it's turned out to be a terrible, terrible distraction for people. Yeah, I, w- I would agree with you. And uh, p- people believe that when a judge runs out of the courtroom, they think it's funny. And I think that is uh, that is part of the misinformation that has been presented, sadly, because... Um, um, you know, the people think of it in terms of uh, battle. Really, what they're watching is a judge leaving to reestablish their honour because they don't wish to offer remedy, returning into a brand new court. Yeah. Yep. Yep. As I say, this is the first I've heard of this in these, you know, these second and third appearances coming back to the court. Well, understanding what they're doing exactly, and in fact, I'll tell you where we found validation for this. The word bar in, in bar association has been deliberately, uh, firstly, it comes from 1823, so it's relatively recent, but it, its history has been clouded from a, a name that is supposed to have been 
a, a wash up of the temple 